As a live streamer, it is important to engage with your audience and also have them watch. You want them to watch the entire length of your live stream video, or if you pre recorded like this YouTube video, you want them to watch as long as possible. When it comes to live streaming, one of the easiest ways to add some dynamics to your video is to incorporate multiple camera angles. So here at my home office, I use multiple camera angles when I go and live stream. If you're not following any of my live streams, especially on Amazon, make sure that you follow me there and you can see multiple camera angles, including a new element that I brought into my video production, which just happens to be a camera slider. So make sure that you check that out in the description below. But when it comes to making live streaming easy with multiple cameras, you want to really consider using a video switcher. So I'm going to walk you through a switcher device here that I have from BZB Gear. Shout out to them for not only providing this switcher, but also providing the PTZ camera that I'm going to use to demo this as well. Let's take a look at the specifics of this particular video switcher and why it's one of my favorites to recommend. Now this may seem like it's something simple, but for me, it's super important. It's the ability to turn on and off your devices. Now the BZB gear switcher has an on and off button. So that allows you to turn it on and off when you want versus having devices that may have to be plugged into a surge protector and left on all the time or you have to turn off the surge protector and it's that hard shut down and then that hard boot up process every time you go to use it. Now, if you're brand new to live streaming and video production, I don't want you to get overwhelmed by all the buttons that you see on a switcher. I'm gonna walk you through some of the basic functionality and why these are so important to make sure that you take your live stream to that next level without overcomplicating things. Now, this particular switcher is an HDMI switcher. So that means we wanna use HDMI HDMI devices for it. You don't want to use any type of USB webcams. Those are just not going to work. Now there are adapters out there for all my high techies, but for you all that are watching this video, I really want you to think about using HDMI compatible devices. That's one less thing you have to troubleshoot if anything goes wrong. Another cool thing about using HDMI inputs for a switcher is the fact that you don't just have to bring cameras into your production. I also have my laptop plugged into this switcher. So if I wanted to do any type of screen share, I could do that as well. And I also like to use an iPad device, especially when I live stream on Amazon Live, because sometimes I'll show products right on the screen or I'll even whiteboard using the app. All of those devices are HDMI compatible, which allows me to plug them into the switcher and go between those different devices and show those on air. Now, along with being HDMI compatible, this switcher also allows for two microphone inputs. So if you have a 3.5 millimeter connection, you can plug that directly into the switcher. Now there's a lot of questions around audio and everyone's audio setup is a little bit different. So here are two use cases that you can do with this type of switcher. The first use case is what I have set up right now, which is a 3.5 millimeter connected directly into my microphone. This particular microphone is my Rode shotgun microphone so it's just one cable coming out of the microphone and being plugged into the switcher. Now that's gonna work in most cases, especially if you have a home office or smaller setup. Now, for those of you all that have a little bit larger setup, you're probably using some type of audio mixer as well. This can still work with your switcher. All you need to do is just come out of your switcher using a 3.5, a quarter inch, whatever your setup is, and just convert it over to 3.5 and plug it directly into this switcher. Once you plug into the switcher here, you can still control the mute volume up and down, but all the technical parts of your audio you would control from your audio mixer. So you have multiple different ways to bring in audio into your production, and I would highly recommend bringing in your video and audio into your switcher and having the person that's controlling the switcher do everything in one location versus trying to bounce back and forth between multiple. Now we're not gonna get into every specific port and menu item on this switcher, but there is one more thing that I definitely want to highlight. This switcher has two HDMI outputs, one for your program feed 
and one for your multi-view feed. Now, why is this important? Because if you're live streaming, you want to make things easy. And if you're a one person operation, you definitely need to make things easy. Now, unlike some other switchers on the market, they don't have both a multi-view and a program out, especially at the price point of this switcher. Now, the multi-view function allows you to see all your inputs so that you can line up your next potential shot. You're not going into it blind. You can actually see all the camera angles or all the things that are connected at the same time in your multi-view. It allows you to be prepared before you send your live program feed, which is that second output the program feed some switchers at this price point only have a program feed and so you're kind of guessing what you're going to show so if camera 2 is not actually ready and you select camera 2 you may not get the picture that you want but if you have a program feed you can actually see what is going on in real time this is one of the most important features on a video switcher so make sure that you do consider that when looking to upgrade any part of your video switching system We've turned our device on using the on off button. We plugged in our HDMI cameras and our computer, and we've also plugged in our microphone. The only other thing that we need to do is plug our switcher into our computer, and this particular switcher does come with a USB-C to USB connection. That way you can plug it directly into your computer. I'm gonna connect the switcher and bring it into my laptop with OBS. You can use any live streaming platform such as Melon, which has been a great sponsor for this channel or you can bring it into any type of video conferencing platform such as zoom so the choice is yours and now you're bringing in video dynamics to more than just a live stream you can bring it into anything that requires video and that's what's so cool about using a switcher how would you like to stand out from everyone else in a zoom meeting by bringing in multiple camera angles and being able to share your screen with a click of one button not a bunch of buttons. We're all plugged in and we're ready to go. Now, if you take a look here on the screen, I'm just gonna use one computer screen for this illustration for this video, but I could potentially have two screens because like I talked about, we have one video output that can be used for multi-view, which is what you're seeing here. And I could have another screen plugged up via HDMI that only shows the live program feed. Now for the multi-view, you can also see the program if you don't have enough space for multiple monitors. So on the far right here is our actual program feed, and we can also see the preview of everything else that we have plugged in. Our PTDD camera is plugged in down here. The camera that you're looking at me right now is plugged in right here on HDMI 2, and we also have our computer plugged into HDMI 3. So this makes it easy to see everything right here in the multi-view. Now also on this particular screen, this gives you a lot of options to see on screen. Now, sometimes you may not wanna use a secondary software. This is the perfect solution because you can actually see all your controls in the bottom right corner of the screen. Now, some of the things that get overlooked are things like your clock, what time it is in different settings. You can see your audio meters as well, everything in one screen. Now, this is an awesome way to look at everything in one setting. Again, making things simple when you're live streaming is something that you definitely want to do. So now let's bring our switcher into our OBS production. Now I've already installed the OBS software and made sure that I upgraded to the latest version. I've also already created a scene called camera and I'll add a source video capture device and call it BZB gear, select OK. And the first option that I have is capture video, which is my switcher, and I'm gonna select OK. So now we have the BZB gear inside of our production. Camera one is currently showing, which is my PTZ camera, which is up on the shelf. Camera two is my A6400, and then camera three is my laptop device. So now we have all of our cameras and devices going to be able to be seen in our live production. And all we did was take one cable connected from our switcher to our laptop. We have just completely changed how we do a live stream, adding more dynamics to our live stream by bringing in more cameras, more devices, and it allows you to not have a static shot. Now you can add some dimensions and elements to your shot. Now, if you guys are getting value from this video, make sure that you hit the thumbs up button. And if you're not a subscriber to this channel, go ahead and hit that red subscribe button as well.
Now I really encourage you to check out the menu settings in this particular switcher because there are a lot of things that you can adjust and change. Now by default that we have on our switcher, we have a buttons on the top and I don't want you to get confused by all the buttons because you're probably not gonna use all of them, especially if you're streaming at home or in a smaller live streaming setting. But let's take a look at a few that will be important to you. Across the top here, we have our microphone one and our microphone two. So this will allow you to control both of those. And you also wanna make sure that your microphone audio levels are turned on. Now, because we have the multi-view, we can also see the levels that are coming in. So we wanna make sure that we're in the green and yellow and not peaking by going into the red. And one of the ways that you can control your audio from peaking is by using the plus and the minus button of the volume controls right here on your switcher device. Just below that, we have our buttons one, two, three, and four, which are our preview and our program buttons. Now, currently we have our program set to camera one. Now I'm gonna go ahead and change that to camera two. So when I select camera two, we see that our live output is camera two, which is the camera over my shoulder. But in our preview window, we can see any device we want to see that is connected. So my preview is looking at my PTZ camera on the left-hand side of me here. And so if I want to switch to that camera, then I already know what that shot looks like before I even go to it. So I can make adjustments if I need to or if I had another shot ready to go, such as computer screen, and maybe I wanted to preset for that, I can go ahead, look at that, make sure that it's ready to go before actually going live. Now, when I'm actually ready to go live, all I have to do is just call that on over. So I'll select three from the program section and it will bring it onto my live screen. And then I can go back to another live production, in this case, camera one, and it makes it easy with the click of a button. Now you don't have to go in and make any configuration changes the way it's set up and the way I just showed you, it's out of the box by default like that. Now this switcher also has a T-bar that allows you to control your switching along with your cut and your audio buttons that allow you to control the different types of fade effects that you have as well. So I'll set up my preview for camera two, and if I use the T-bar, you'll see that I can cut and I can fade based on which setting that I have, or I can use the buttons down here to cut and fade between the two options that I have. So you have a lot of different effects when it comes to these switchers as well. Not the most important part of why you're using a video switcher, but it does add, again, more dynamics to your video. Now, if you're ready to take it to the next level, like I mentioned earlier, you can manage a lot inside of the switcher, inside of their menu control options. Right on the top of the switcher is a menu control. So you don't have to download any type of software to get to some of the more interesting parts of your video switcher and make those adjustments. You can simply go into your menu, clicking it down, and then scrolling with the turn wheel, and you can notice that there are a bunch of different settings that you can change inside of the switcher. You can even add some pictures inside of here as well to bring those on screen. You can change the brightness, the program outs. You can change a whole bunch of different settings inside of here, all with the click of a button, just pressing down on the menu option, and then scrolling down. So make sure that you check out all the different things that you can edit and change inside of the switcher just by a click of a button using the menu option. Now that you have an idea of how to use a video switcher and the importance of it, in the next video, I'm gonna walk you through some of the basics of a PTZ camera and why those are super cool to use and I get a lot of attention when I bring those into my live stream productions. I'll see you in the next video.